true. All I know about parenting an autistic child I learned from Albus Dumbledore and Harry Potter. When I was pregnant with my son 20 years ago, <laughs> that was the summer that Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone was published. I became an instant Potterhead. I read and reread all the books in order in preparation for the next one to come out. And I really read those books to kind of escape what was happening in my daily life. My son and daughter both have autism. I didn't realize when my son was born um, what really was going on. I knew something was different. I just couldn't put my finger on it, really. Um, and he was real little, luckily, when we were um, given a diagnosis for him. He couldn't breastfeed, and he never really slept. I knew he wasn't like other babies I knew, but there wasn't anything um, that was a big enough red flag for us to uh, really be too concerned, but it was always in the back of my mind. But I didn't know that he was a wizard born to muggle parents. I didn't get it. I spent most of that time, and for a lot of years to come, pushing my wizard kids to be muggles. Like I said, when my son was about 18 months old, we got a referral from the pediatrician to go see a speech therapist. My son had a lot of words to say, but he put them together in a little bit of a strange order. I don't know how else to explain it. I thought he sounded super smart. So we went, and within about five minutes of hanging out in her office and um, my son playing on the floor, she said, oh yeah, he definitely has autism. So that's what it felt like. It felt like Crucio, the torture curse. It was completely from left field. I couldn't, I, I couldn't breathe. I didn't know what to say. This was not the reason why we were at this appointment. When all was said and done, we were very lucky to be able to catch this at such an early age. Most kids are not able to get a diagnosis at 18 months. <coughs> But it did take me a lot of years to realize that autism is not a curse, even though some days and some moments it feels that way. But most of my days now I really look back on that and regret that I had such a muggle mindset. Back then, nobody gave me a letter to Hogwarts. Nobody gave me a ticket to platform nine and three quarters. We were just kind of out there. We didn't know anyone else in our lives that had a family member or a child with autism. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know what was the right path and we didn't have anyone to get advice from. We were definitely muggles in a wizard world. We just didn't know it. So we tried everything there was to try, every therapy, every intervention. We just threw it all at the wall and tried to see what would stick. I didn't want to waste one single moment that I could be giving my son and my daughter the ability to become more like everyone else. I wanted them to become like me, like all the other little kids around them. I wanted them to become muggles in their wizard world. Nobody said that to me <laughs> when my son was diagnosed at 18 months old. No one said, you're a wizard, Harry. They just said, oh, he has autism. Nobody told me that wizards are awesome. Nobody told me that meeting my kids where they were, not where I wanted them to be, would be a life-changing perspective for them and for me. 
Nobody showed me all the positive things about having someone in my life that has autism. Fear of a name only increases fear of the thing itself. That's not Albus Dumbledore, that's Hermione Granger. When my son was younger, the differences were much more subtle when he was in preschool, first grade, second grade, and I could sort of go about pretending like he was getting all of these therapies and interventions and treatments and that eventually he would catch up and be just like everybody else. Nope, he has autism. Only when I was much more comfortable with that word, with that concept, when I embraced that about my kids, were they actually able to make great leaps and bounds in their growth and progress. Back in those days, 20 years ago, there was no Google. I didn't have spell books to look in to find out what was the right thing to do to fix my kids. But there are no magical spells to make a disability disappear. What I didn't know is that that's not the goal. If you're a wizard, you should be the best wizard you can be. The goal is not to be a wizard who is mistaken for a muggle. Here's Albus Dumbledore. It does not do well to dwell on dreams and forget to live. Remember that. Well, I used to have muggle dreams for sure. I wanted my son to play on the baseball team in the town. I wanted him to go to birthday parties and go to college. But muggle dreams for wizards are irrelevant. My daughter is a witch and my son is a wizard. Wizards go to Hogwarts, not Harvard. And I realized that that's how it should be. We shouldn't be forcing our kids or each other to be something that we aren't. It matters not what someone is born, but what they grow to be. If you ask any parent, of a child of any age, what they want for their child in their future. They want them to be happy, they want them to be successful, they want them to live full lives. But that's not what I was doing. I was focusing on trying to make my kids into muggles. Once I let go of those expectations, everything changed for us. It is our choices that show who we truly are, far more than our abilities. When my kids were little, I would ask them about their choices every day when they got home from school. Did you make good choices today, honey? What I was really asking my son is if he did anything he, that was unusual, that he shouldn't have been doing, that would make him stick out from the other kids. But I wasn't thinking about my choices in those instances. What about my choices? I chose to hold my wizard kids to a muggle standard. But they're not muggles. They're autistic. When I became comfortable with that word, with that fact, they began to blossom into the people that they are today and will continue to grow into. Differences of habit and language are nothing at all if our aims are identical and our hearts are open. I think that can be used in a lot of different circumstances, but in relation to autism, I want people to embrace my kids, not try to change them. I want every person to be honored for what they have to offer as an individual. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. Some people are shy, some people are outgoing, some people are awkward, some people are silly. Some people communicate verbally, other people communicate 
using sign language, or even an iPad. And all of those things are okay. None of those people have any more or less to offer than the next person. Every person deserves to belong. If we embrace the wizards in our muggle world, we'll all be better off for it. Happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. When you walk around in the dark, sometimes you trip over things, you're a little nervous maybe. So turn on the light. You won't need any polyjuice potion to turn you into someone else. You won't need any Felix Felicius to give you a little luck in your life. Half-bloods, pure-bloods, neurotypicals, autistic people. Everybody has the right to be included and valued in their community. And if we all do that, our glasses will not be half full, they will overflow. Thank you.